A shower. <laughs> oh, yeah, where is the Oh, yeah. Right, right. Further Oh, I did. I didn't. Yeah, I them like once a day, so I didn't see that one. But I did see um, the superintendent's update, which was which was pretty good. So it's uh, six o'clock. We call the meeting to order. We have um, six out of seven of us here. And uh, anybody have anything they need to add to the agenda? Nobody's saying they do. I'll assume we don't. Um, and then we need to do the minutes from just formality to do the minutes from last meeting. Need a motion on that? If someone would, please. Made by Chuck. Anybody else? Second? Dylan? Any discussion on the minutes? Nothing. So all in favor of the minutes is printed aye. Anyone opposed or abstain? Okay. I've got to remember we we need to speak up. I don't know if Lori's listening yet. Yeah, she is. I see her on the screen. Lori Noyes wanted us to be um, a little more clear on what we're voting on. And so we just approved the minutes from the last meeting. And um, we're supposed to at this time enter a budget hearing. This would be the next budget cycle we're looking at. And I think included in that, um, here we go. We have a report from Kathy. And she did also gave me an updated warrant, which includes one additional item than compared to the one you got in your uh, packets, everybody. So I open the budget hearing, and I suppose the first thing we do is, um, I guess we could ask if there's anyone out there that has any questions on the budget. Because we, we did most of our actions last meeting. Um, see anybody out there that wants to ask anything? So at, at this point, we've we've made a few changes from, well, I think we're on the third draft. And uh, at our last meeting, we made some changes by um, taking some money out of our, uh, we're going to have a warrant article to take some money out of special ed. 
um, trust and use it to offset some special ed costs. Um, let's see, what were the other three things? John, you, you made most of the motions. I'll, I'll, I'll dig through and find them before we get. It was uh, the 50,000 for the playground equipment. We decided to take that out of a trust fund as well. So we reduced, so there's 150 we've reduced and um, we decided to use some of the fund balance, 400, as opposed to nothing. Or, so, so at the end of the day, when we were originally looking at something in the order of $4 and something uh, per thousand, um, as a tax increase, we're down around two. What's the, where are we now? Two dollars? Yeah, I know. Problem is, I, they're out of sequence now. I'm sure I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, so we're looking at in 2000. 18, we were at 22.27 for tax rate, 2019-21-22. Last year, we had a dip um, because of um, some state aid, one-time state aid to 18.69, and now we're back up to 21.65, which is right between eight, our 2018 and 19 rate. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it kind of sounds better because we went up, but it's really that we went down that in you know, last year. So usually budget hearings, people have some questions. So I'll once again, throw it out there if anybody has questions or anybody on the board have any. Anybody? Yeah, I had a few questions. Okay, Don. On the um, notes and drip. First of all, I want to thank Kathy for doing a great job on this because it makes it doable as opposed to not doable by having this. Um, on the notes from draft two, one, two, three, four, five, six bullets down, there were some deductions that I wasn't too happy about. Um, security cameras, security, uh, summer speech services, books, 7,000, online services, 4,000, and instructional services, 4,000. That also included speakers of 31,000 and picnic tables. I, I think maybe we can do without speakers and picnic tables, but I don't know about the other uh, 22,000. It seems like... Uh, it's short-sighted to make those cuts. And I wondered, <clears throat> I don't know how complicated we want to get, but I wondered if we've raised the increase 1% on the tuition that would cover the 22,000 additional dollars I'm talking about putting back in. Um, I looked through all of them and I would note that um, principal salaries and the, are, are being frozen, which, which I think should be noted and credited to the principals. <clears throat> um, but, I, and I looked at the others reductions and I didn't have as many issues with those, but I'm wondering if we can discuss putting some of that back in, if possible. Sure, so it's, a, it's a hearing and that's the purpose of it. it in, round, in round numbers, it's about 22,000 additional dollars. Um, I really don't know how important the reduced internet expenses of $3,600. So I'd have to ask Jim Marshall whether that was well spent or not, but I would always well, like to look at those. Well, I, I think that's because we're getting services from a different vendor. Oh, okay. it's not that they're curtailing anything. It's they just got a better deal. Explain, explain some of those, Don. You're, you said you're looking at the Woodsville elementary expenses, that line item. I'm looking at the, right. So security cameras and speakers, we are hoping to do this year if we can, um, so which we're taking out. Summer speech um, is additional uh, services that um, the SPED director has talked about doing, getting some of that grant funded, funding that she hasn't quite heard of yet for those compensatory services next summer, additional funds. And so she's hoping to use some of those funds for those additional speech services as well as specialized summer services. So that additional services were taken out. Um, books were um, last year or in the current year, there was a big chunk of money 
I, be, I believe it was almost $48,000, $50,000 that was set aside for a new pro reading program, literacy program at the elementary school. So we purchased that this year. We don't need that money next year, but we were putting some stuff aside in those first early drafts um, for other things that um, administration, when they looked at it again, did take that out. So that 7,000 for books would have been in that line item, um, online services, um, Staff development, instructional services was additional uh, PD, I believe, in part due to that new program, but they're hoping to use uh, grant funded monies for that professional development. Um, and then the picnic tables and storage shed was something that they also decided that they could do without for next year, so. Right, on the online services, you just sort of said what that said, but what, is that gonna be funded by something else? Is that what you're saying? It might have been, I can look, I'm not sure if we increased it in one draft and took it back out in another. Let me just look real quick. Minutes. So right now, um, the budget has always been $4,000 for this current year. It, it's 3000 and it must have jumped up because we have brought it back down to 8,400. So it's still an increase of 5,400 in there for okay. elementary online services. Okay, so you reduced it from a higher number and not eliminated it. Right. Okay. Right. And then what's L in the first bullet? It says also reduce expense for the L position. I don't know what that is. Uh, English, that's a second language. Okay. Yep. So we've always had it in there um, most recently as a part time position. Um, and it's been hard to fill that part-time position in the last couple of years. And so they've decided to take it out as a salaried position or a, a employee position and maybe, and we put money in there for a contracted service instead. So. And then on the second page, you had technology decrease 60,000, 63,000. the let's see, second to the last paragraph, mm -hmm. one, two, three, see where I'm talking? Yep. What was that from? Oh, that was from a lot of different things. So like in the high school, um, I think we budgeted for a number of um, smart TVs this current year, uh, additional employee laptops um, that we don't need next year. Uh, interactive boards that we've gotten um, already, so we don't need to budget for them again. So it was just a matter of we beefed it up with the technology, this current budget that we don't need. In it's, next it's budget, so. As much because the prior year that John made us buy, you know, buy a little bit extra and get yep. stocked up on things. So, right. yeah. And then my last uh, question was. Uh, on the. Uh, I think this is the point Dick was making that with the decreases in 2019 and 2020, that was a decrease of 1663. And now we're only increasing it by 16, 16.63 percent decrease. And now we're increasing it back up to 15.83. So we're actually decreasing it less than the decreases. We're increasing it less than the decreases for the past two years. And I think it'd be helpful for the voters to know that as well. Um, And then there's a reference to the Moran Trust, but it doesn't really say anything. So what's happening with that? Um, that will actually be in your warrant articles. I believe it's article 11 when we get to that. Okay. Um, I, I think we can yep. fairly easily just, so um, the Moran Trust is, um, um, they're willing to give us a fair amount of money for math and math related um, programs use in Woodsville schools. The, the Moran sisters grew up in Woodsville and they had have obviously some real bonds here and they wanted to. So the only conditions that they actually want to give us more money than we originally anticipated and we didn't ask for permission to accept the amount of money that they're willing to give us. So we have to have a warrant article and, and it's written very broadly to allow us to accept pretty much anything anybody gives us the way it's the way it's written, which is the way it ought to be. Um, and 
the requirements are that we spend it in Woodsville schools. So we, we can only spend it in this building or in the elementary school. And it has to be somewhat math related, which I, when I talked to, um, I think he's a nephew, um, he agreed that any STEM kind of classes, you know, science, technology, engineering, math would be, um, would, would meet the spirit of what they were intending. So that's, that's my understanding of it at this time. Thank you for your informative, quick, and thorough responses, Kathy. Appreciate it. So, some of that grant that we got this year, is there any way of using some of that towards some of that, you know, those things that we um, decreased possibly? Or. <laughs> There is, if it's COVID related, if it's, you know, related to, you know, us being remote, we could do that for sure. Um, the, I believe like security, the web cameras um, for interactive boards are part of like remote instruction. That's something you can do. The speakers are for the PA system, right? So I'm not quite sure if those are COVID related that we could use those funds for, but we'll definitely take a look. This like the, um, taking the money out of the special um, education with debt possibly be used for that as well, maybe or no. no, okay. Well, if I could just add it this time, I was going to wait till the warrant article. Um, but while we're talking about budget, so after this was sent off, um, we got notice from the special ed department that there was a change in special ed expenses budgeted for next year. Um, so I thought I'd just bring it to the board's attention. It's about a $22,000 increase for next year. So you can do one of three things. You can do nothing. You can increase the operating budget by 22,000 or um, increase that warrant article. Uh, there's gonna be a separate warrant article that you'll see as the board voted to take $100,000 out for special ed expenses to be paid for by the special ed trust up to that amount. If we don't need it, we don't pull it out. Um, you could increase it to 122 right. um, or a chance. But I did want to add that there was an increased cost. Um, as everybody knows it's a moving target. And <laughs> so. Follow that. So if there's 22,000 extra coming from the state, we would increase the amount withdrawn from the trust or we decrease it? Additional expense. So we take more money out of the trust to cover it if we decide to. I'll put that down on uh, agenda item eight. There is no seven. Oh, okay. So uh, we'll make that the uh, warrant articles discussion. We'll put it in there. Anybody else, any questions, any comments about the budget out there and Zoom land at all yet? And while we're at nothing. nothing. Well, I, I think I think we've discussed before that we probably want to do a, a fairly um, generic newspaper thing a couple of weeks before, just to summarize what you've got here and, and go over the articles because it's unfortunate side effect of this COVID thing that you can't have informational meetings that are worth anything as far as I'm concerned. They're just worthless. And the same thing with the town. Their meetings are worthless. So we really shouldn't be doing anything drastic. We just, and, and we need to make it real clear in the paper what we're doing. And people can read about it and understand it. <clears throat> yeah, we could do that. You want to go with me? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> So there being no further questions, I'll, anyone um, opposed to closing the hearing? All right, well, in that case, we will call the uh, hearing closed at eight, 618 and move to public input, which might be, might be a little different. Anybody have anything out there in public input? No? Okay.
Only one thing from Mr. Paul Hayes. Um, okay, we'd like people to ask if people can identify themselves and um, we can speak to someone tomorrow. So that's uh, okay. So all I got out of that is identify ourselves. Okay, well, I'm Richard Guy, uh, school board member and chair, and who else has spoken? Chuck Fenn spoke a minute ago. Um, to my left, John Rutherford on the far right from camera land, be on the far right. It's okay, you don't have to identify yourselves now. <laughs> Sabrina Brown would be next to him. Okay, well, when we speak, we probably should say who we are then. I, I understand what he, so uh, he's a reporter for the Caledonian Record, in case anybody wonders. Tomorrow, I'm assuming about stuff on record. What's that? If anyone wants to speak to someone, I'm assuming school board on the record, probably, um, I'm assuming, so that's what he asked. Oh. So do you want to talk to Paul at some point? On the record? Like right now? No, tomorrow. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm like, what are we talking about? Thank you. All right. Um, he has my phone number. Okay. That is, uh, and he gave his whole phone number to everybody else. Okay. So, moving down to administrator reports. Um, yes. So, Lori's not well tonight, so we won't be. She won't be here. Yeah, I when she called me, I'm like, oh my, you don't you don't sound well. That's too bad. So um, she actually sent an updated. Did anybody or everybody see her updated email that she sent this afternoon at roughly two o'clock? No, no, no. Um, well. Assuming we've all had read a report, which I expect we all have. So the new one, um, she expressed that we just heard from the state regarding the next round of federal relief funds related to COVID. And uh, we will receive $855,000 for COVID, broadly related COVID expenses, which could be uh, custodial staff, aids, whatever we need to bring in to make things work. Um, but it needs to have some relation to, to, the, to the pandemic. Um, she also mentioned that um, Eric Chase and Eric Erickson, um, they have that course comparison that we talked about at our last meeting. And they have, um, she said they did an excellent job on it and thought it would probably, at the end of the day, she thought it might, might make, sign, <laughs> make sense for us to go over that next time because um, she's not here and I think probably she needs to participate in that. Um, and then there was uh, a new law has passed requir requiring specific content on the Holocaust and genocide that goes into effect this uh, summer. And some of the content has been taught by sixth grade with another required high school accredited course. Um, and I'll just, at the, at the end of the day, there, there's a committee working on it. And I think um, it's in her printed report. I think that's where I read about it first. <clears throat> yeah, the, the last part of her report. This, it's all part somewhat related to what we talked about um, this this uh, early last fall, I think we had some students that were concerned about race and, and how race is um, treated and taught and so on. And uh, so that's being worked on. Um, and so I think, didn't we already talk about Scott Edwards as a resignation? Yes, I think. Um, and and she and Joey Mitchell. Hmm. So 
it's a reasonable question. I think at one time I was thought it was a little bit of a yeah. I think it was. I thought it was through another organization sometime in the past, but yeah. Hmm. Pardon me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> this is Sabrina Brown. I was asking if the SAP position was a contracted position or a school-based position. I didn't realize you weren't. It's hard to replay your whole conversation over again. Um, but the answer is that it's a school position. And um, I, if she, if she doesn't specifically ask us and, and say this is a nomination, but why don't we vote on it as if it were? Um, so if somebody would move to accept him as a SAP um, in that position, and we can vote and then and we cover our basis. For the SAP position. Substance abuse prevention is the title of the position. Motion made by Chuck. Anyone second that? Don seconds it. Any discussion? All in favor of, of uh, Joey Mitchell for that position say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstain? Okay. You abstain? Okay. Well, still goes. Thank you. It's three, three, four. No, no oppose. So. Oh. Um, Kathy, do you go ahead, Don? I had one question about in her in Laura's report <clears throat> talking about the um, social justice authentic history uh, programming that they're thinking about doing, and it's. Somewhere up in here, I thought it said that um, they were talking about putting it as part of another course. I'm a little bit um, uneasy with that. I think it would be too easy to make it not as important as it should be. Um, so I just wanted to poke that in there when, so that Lori knows that at least I'm concerned about addressing that in a significant enough way that we can all be sure something's being done that's appropriate and, and sufficient. So would it? Um, so what she specifically said is that the high school staff said they would rather embed the, this content into existing courses rather than create a new one. Um, the high schools added books by authors of color and so on. Um, maybe we should let her describe this in a little more detail. Didn't want to gloss over it. Yeah, to raise it when we when it was first brought up. That's fine. We can discuss it later. So, Kathy, do you need this? You're happy. <laughs> you don't need to add anything to your report then. Um, Mr. Chase. See. Good evening. Chase, do you have anything you'd like to add to yours, sir? I, I, I do. do. Um, um, Mr. Nichols should have a handout for you. About proposed position changes. Oh, this would be a good time to hand it out. He, he gave me, I didn't realize it was a stack handout. He just gave me a thing. All right. Okay. So as you can see in Laurie's report, um, Scott Edwards has announced that he will be retiring at the end of this year. Our Cisco Academy instructor, Glenn Page, uh, upon hearing this came to me with a suggestion that we combine the Cisco program with the Tech Ed program. He feels he can run the few students that take Cisco within the classroom portion of the Tech Ed room while working with students in the Tech Ed lab. The uh, classroom is, uh, has windows and he can see clearly from any point in the room. Um, the reason we would do this is because the combination of music and family and consumer science has become um, just a bit much. 
Uh, while it was Mrs. Flato's suggestion initially, I think she's been struggling this year. It's been a very bad year to be a music teacher to start with. Mm -hmm. um, we, most of the things you would want to do in a music classroom, you really can't do anymore. Um, so what we are proposing is to combine the Cisco position with the tech ed position and take the music and family and consumer science position and split those into two full-time positions. So it's not, a, it's not a cost item, it's merely moving two, um, two positions around. What it would buy us is between nine and 10 new electives for students, um, both in, in the area of music and in the area of family and consumer science. What it loses us is one duplicate section of architectural design. Doesn't sound like we lose much of anything and gain a lot. We do gain a lot, yes. Can I ask a question? How would woodworking and topics in computer science be taught at the same time? Can you repeat that? I got garbled. Sorry. So looking at the tech ed and Cisco proposed schedule, um, second semester, it looks like wilderness tech or woodworking and topics in computer science would be at the same class. What would yes, that yes. look like? Well, that would largely look like uh, Mr. Page out in the, in the lab uh, with the students working on the boats or, or working on woodworking with the one or two students that are taking the Cisco Academy program inside the, the classroom behind the glass where he can where they can be seen but cisco is is largely um it's largely computer driven with the instructor there to be a facilitator for the hands-on wiring projects as opposed to standing there and and lecturing or or doing much instructing in that way okay so more self-directed online very much computer so computer science program and he would be in, I was just thinking, I was envision, envisioning woodworking students being woodworking with tools and computer science students kind of being on their own, but I didn't realize what Cisco looked like in the computer science realm. Yeah, I mean, currently if he, he can have two or three students working on two or three different components of that program simultaneously in the same room because it is largely student directed. Sounds good. Sounds great. Uninformed. What, Eric, what does FCS stand for? Family and Consumer Science. Okay. When we were in school, Don, it would have been called Home Ec. Gotcha. <laughs> You're right. That's what it was called. <laughs> Eric, I mean, you gave a very neutral presentation, what are your thoughts on uh, pros and cons? Uh, I think there's an awful lot to be gained. Um, truly, it, it's, it's hard to find enough electives for students. Uh, we do have a limited staff. And um, it's one of the reasons the, the Holocaust course makes me nervous. I have a hard enough time getting social studies electives in there as it is. Um, but this does buy us 10 more classes that student can sign up for. And at least in the FCS um, category, you're getting things like uh, family and personal, personal and family living, foundations of education, which are, are, are you know, basic uh, for those students interested in teaching or in working with small children. I, I think it really adds to, our, um, adds to our course catalog in a positive way. How is the um, four day a week? How's the four day a week program going? Uh, it went very well. I included some pictures of the um, mm -hmm. January 25th. That was our first day back with everybody involved. Um, those are some pictures actually of our largest classes. Um, that period one class meets in the library, the period four class meets in the cafeteria. And I've given you a list of all of the other adjustments we've made to make that work. Um, good example is today at lunch, my, the cafeteria was full with me on duty, but there were still 12 intrepid souls out in the freezing cold with Mr. Strau, because for some reason the freshmen like to eat lunch outside regardless of what the weather is. 
So we haven't had any problems. There have been a few over um, a few juniors that have been going into the uh, tech ed lab and using that space to eat their lunch, uh, mostly just by choice to hang out with Mr. Edwards, I think, because there's plenty of room in the calf during the junior lunch. But overall, our, we've got our spacing together. It's been very smooth. Great. It's good to know. Let's go. go ahead. Uh, Mr. Chase, do we still offer the mentoring program at the elementary school? The mentoring program? The yes. mentoring program. Unfortunately, the mentoring program has been a little difficult this year since they won't let us into the building. Um, what we've been doing, is we've been doing an online child development course for those students. And this part, this second semester, we're gonna do some virtual mentoring where they will um, develop a, a class to teach to the kids online, um, perhaps get online and read them a story. A couple of teachers have signed up and aren't are willing to work with us in that way, but we all have to be virtual. They don't want us in the building with them. So looking at next year's proposed schedule, does that fall under family consumer science? Because I don't see that as a choice. That's why I was wondering. Uh, it does not. The, family cons the uh, mentoring position is uh, an hourly um, position. She largely is in charge of transporting the students between the two schools. Um, we pulled that out of family and consumer science last year. Okay, and who provides the grade or who assigns the grade for that class then? I'm sorry? Who assigns a grade for that class? It's Mentoring is a pass-fail grade. I was just going to advocate that it be put in here if we didn't offer it under family and consumer science, but it sounds like it's already in the course catalog for next year. It's, it's already there and it's we've got it at two periods a day. If I were to do that into the family and consumer science program, then we'd miss, we'd lose, well, virtually everything because <laughs> it runs two out of the three periods that the teacher can teach. That fourth period is a prep period. Everybody good? I met Mr. Mr. Chase. Um, it's pretty impressive, the spacing, the fact that most, almost all the kids have a mask on. I guess it gives a little more credibility that there were a couple of kids that didn't, so perhaps they weren't completely staged, but I, it's impressive. I mean, it's, it's good work. Thank you. Oh, in the well, cafeteria. I think the picture you're looking at, Don, is in the cafeteria at lunch. When they're seated at the table, they do take their masks off to eat. The rule is that when you're up and, and moving around. Let, we'll let that pass. <laughs> we've, we've got to work on that. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Chase. You're all set? I am. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Phillips around, does he have anything he'd like? Good evening, how are you? There. Hi there, everyone. Um, oh. Let's see, I've got a brief report, but I guess the one thing I just wanted to bring up or make sure that folks were aware of is, like all schools, one of the concerns that we've had through this period of time is um, how engaged kids have been during remote instruction. and. Uh, we, you know, we've had many students who may turn on their computers, but you know, we call it ghosting. They disappear partway through the day. And it's been frustrating in just reaching out, contacting parents. So uh, I was glad when the 21st Century Program, Gen West, was able to secure some additional funds to offer additional support to kids that have missed some essential skills so we've just started outreach to do a Wednesday or Saturday program to help kids get up to speed who, um, who have lost a lot of instructional time through the uh, remote option. Uh, we would do that face-to-face -face with kids and tap into some additional funds uh, from the state through the 21st century grant. So right now we're looking to recruit those kids and have contacted all parents of kids that have, um, haven't submitted enough work to evaluate their work or are struggling with the remote option. I, I understand the remote problem being 
I, I, I've just taken an online course a couple last week and intermittently th throughout the course, they'll, they'll stop and make you click something to make sure you're still right. there. <laughs> I'm like, oh, aren't you guys clever? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't just let it play and walk away. Yeah, be... <laughs> we've seen a lot of that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, so other than that, I didn't have anything else to add unless there are questions. Any questions? I had was there's a picture of the of the structure for the playground and in one part yes. I saw it was out and one part it's in so is it in or is it out? We had um, money in this year's budget for the playground and that's in and that's what this picture uh, represents what we'll get. The other one that's out or um, we we're looking at different funds for is next fiscal year. And that would be for the older kids outside the seven, eight wing. So, so this one is in and we'll be looking for volunteers to help install it once we get rid of all this darn snow. <laughs> we haven't gotten it yet. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a while. We're hoping for April. Thank you. You're welcome. So, Mr. Mr. Ross, do you have anything? You're here, so you can just talk to us. That's okay. Yeah. Uh oh. Well, you can't. You can't just talk. No oh, way. A uh, little button on there. You. Yeah. Oh no. One. There we go. Uh, I don't have much to add. I just would like to thank, um, I met with Eric and Jamie concerning the mentoring program, and I'd like to thank them for their flexibility and um, their sensitivity to all our staff concerns regarding our COVID situation. Uh, we worked together and, and came up with a, a virtual program that we thought would work. And I've got a, a couple of teachers who are interested in, in working with that. Other than that, we have pictures, we're doing well. And I gave you a little bit more about our newsletter that we put out every week. So that's um, what's going on in the classrooms. But I share that a little bit more. I don't normally do that. Well, and I, I noticed that and I thought it was fabulous. I loved seeing what the kids were doing in general terms. And I know it's one more thing for them to do, but that was really helpful. Thank you. The, yeah, the, the, uh, the teachers, uh, they contribute once once a month on, on their classes and I'd be more than well, more than happy to add you to our newsletter um, mail list, email list. So you get it weekly. Sure, we can do that. Thank you, Mr. Ross. So I think we have. I don't know if uh, Jessica, the cone robe. there she is up in the corner. You don't know you're in the corner, but we do. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you all? I think we're all right. Good. I have nothing to add. I wish I did. The DOE still has us all waiting with great anticipation about the funding for compensatory services, but... Um, other than that, we're just rocking steady like everybody else. <laughs> and unless you have questions, I don't have anything else to add. Thank you. I, um, I like your headset. Where'd you get that? <laughs> I think it was a lucky uh, TJ Maxx find. There you go. Anybody have questions for Jessica? All right. Thank you. I don't think, did, is Bird on that list? Anybody see Bert on there? Bert Vines. I am here. How are you tonight? I'm great. Hey, I just noticed something coming in the building and I thought I'd share. Um, not meant to be a criticism, but you know, your, your little room upstairs, the light's on in there and it doesn't look very orderly from the front when you look in through those windows. Well, there's a lot of stuff in there. That's pretty much our only storage space. So well, my thought is maybe if the lights weren't on in there, I wouldn't have noticed. Well, so, they uh, are automatic. They yeah. 
So, so somebody might have been in there or something. Yeah, there must have been somebody in there fairly recently because they're on a motion detector and and okay. will uh, go off when there's no more movement. Yep. Uh, I don't really have anything to uh, add either. Uh, things are going well. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, maintenance stuff done. Craig Tetley is absolutely knocking this position out of the park. I'm so impressed with the way, way he's grabbed onto this and what he's doing. Great. Great. I did have one question, Bert. On the H HVAC system, I heard something about um, concerns in Israel. Some of the schools had HVAC systems which were not circulating fresh air. And I thought I would confirm with you that that's not an issue in our school district. In other words, the HVAC systems were just recirculating the air in the schools and I think it was air conditioning and they weren't venting it out, which obviously made it more likely for the kids to get sick. Uh, we have a, a, a very good ventilation system at all three schools uh, where we are bringing in fresh air. We have two, to supplement things, we have two air purification units coming in for the high school, for the cafeteria and for the gym to kind of kick it in the tail a little bit also. They're supposed to be in this week. Okay, any other questions for Mr. Vines? I was just wondering, what is the new banner in the gym? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What is the new banner in the gym? That's the last banner. I, I'm i not sure which team it was last year. Okay, one of the sports team's banners? Yes, one, one of the runner-up banners, I think. I didn't personally put it up. I just, I, but I know it's, it's, it's been put up. Mike Wilson put that up for us. I was just wondering, thank you. Sure. Anybody else have anything for Bert? We're good. Thank you, Bert. Okay, thank you. Drive safe. It's nice not having to drive to meetings, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, Mr. Erickson, did you have anything you'd like to, to go over with us tonight, sir? Uh, maybe just a few things. I won't take much of your time. Uh, uh, you can see in the report, uh, I don't really have much to add, but wanted to call your attention to um, some of the work that we've been doing around IKEA. I think a lot of the, the schools have been deploying a second and third round of star testing. Um, so I'll be on the lookout for that data when that comes through and I'll make sure to do that, uh, do those screeners and assessments um, for IKEA. Another thing that's been taking on quite a bit of time and it's a large development effort is uh, some curriculum mapping. Um, a lot of complicated, but I think very valuable work that's going on there. Um, we've been working on our website redevelopment and I think that's going well. Hopefully we'll get that over the top and can share that with you uh, shortly. And then lastly, I um, wanna say thanks to um, Jessica. She and I um, cooperatively presented a uh, data privacy presentation to the elementary and middle schools in this last month. And I think that went over pretty well. And with that, hey. I have nothing else, but I'll take questions if you have any. Any questions for him? Anyone? Awesome, thank you so much. And I don't know if Jim's here. I can't read all the names on that board from here. But... He's not showing, no. Okay. I think Sandra's report, I think we're good. So moving on to the warrant articles, um, everyone has a copy of the, um, gosh, there's a lot of warrant articles, there's 12 now. There were 11, I think, on the versions you all have. Yep. Um, and I'll just, uh, article one is just to hear the reports, which is, is really a, a a boilerplate. Article two is the budget, which is uh, at this point, it's 
14,710, 14,710,000, which is, um, I believe, 60,000 less. I think it was a $60,000 reduction in our budget. Uh, article three was to see if we would um, move $100,000 in special education expenses. And what we discussed earlier tonight was that um, because of that 22,000 increase, do we want to take out 122? Do, can you tell me the balance in that line? Um, I, I'm sure it's here somewhere, but I. Uh, special right now has uh, 282,000 in it. That's 282,000 mm -hmm. in it now. Okay, so that would be up to we wouldn't like I said we wouldn't use all of it if we didn't need to. Right. Yeah. So I guess I'd leave it up to the board at this time if somebody wants to make a motion to change it to 122, that would take care of that $22,000 increase. Or if we want to pass that on as a tax increase, there's your two choices. What's I'll your move pleasure? The, I'll move that we take the 22 out of the trust fund. So we make a motion to change the, the dollar value of this article from 100 to 122. Yes. Any more discussion on that? Okay. All right. How, does that, how do those trust funds get refunded? Well, uh, the last articles in, in this warrant, if you'll read article, in this case, it would be article, article nine. Um, or in your version, it's probably Article 8. We, there's an additional Article 6 that's been changed. So our, Article in 8 in yours, I think, says to raise an appropriate $50,000 to be added to the previous established special education trust. That's how that money gets in there. And it's just a savings account in case we get uh, slammed one year by an unexpectedly large expense. So... Um, Motions made and seconded to make this 122. Anybody else? Discussion on that? All in favor? Anyone opposed? So the ayes have it. Article four is going to be um, to raise the sum of 104, 100 and, oh, I used to know how to read. 104,000, $173 for purpose of reducing tax years commitment. Basically what it is is um, spending interest earned on our bond proceeds from our building loans and uh, reducing taxes as a result. So that's a simple one. Article, go ahead. So just summarize that in a different way than it's written here. So when I read that it sounds, it reads kind of rough. Okay. And I don't know how this is gonna be presented to the voters. Um, you know, when the people are reading it and voting, if they haven't read, if they haven't listened, you know, saw any of the prior literature, when you read this, it just, it's like, well, what the heck is this? That's why I think we you need know. to do some advertising, uh, you know, a newspaper. Well, is there campaign. a way to, to word it so that it's a little more direct exactly what it is? I don't know, Kathy, if we can, it's just, it's, it's it doesn't read, it doesn't, it's just difficult. Mm. It is, I agree. Um, this is verbiage from Department of Revenue in order to make sure it's worded correctly so we get to use it correctly. Um, it's very funky because it says to vote to raise and appropriate and we're not really raising and appropriating anything. We're taking it out of our investment account already earned and putting it you know, in the general fund to reduce taxes. So like Dick said, I think it's really important that we explain article two, this is money we have, we're gonna reduce taxes, it's gonna reduce it by 30 cents. Um, First time they read this in front of Is there some way? I mean, I don't know. Um, the ballot was very simple for the drive-through last year. Mm -hmm. Very more simple than this. I mean, the verbiage was there, but is there any way we can, like in parentheses, say just that this is interest earned in our investment account that's going to reduce our tax? Well, I, I, it does. Or, it does say you know, that. This, this in, in brackets, it says this amount represents the interest earned on bond proceeds transferred to the general fund on or before that date. So uh, to me, reading that makes it all clear, but I, I, I agree, DRA doesn't, it, you know, the whole the whole raisin appropriate thing, I, I agree, it, it sounds like a tax, and uh, but it's their legal way of saying that 
um, you're going to be allowed to do this. And I, I can't say that they're my favorite outfit. So I don't, we can just try to a campaign. To, yeah. It still has to be approved by Department of Rev. Yeah, I think they, um, they have to approve the verbiage exactly. So. Um, I can ask her if, you know, I mean, would putting in parentheses, this reduces the tax rate by 30 cents. Do you think showing something that reduces the tax rate might help in, in you know, plain sight and that might help? That, that makes sense to me. You know? That would be a good idea. I'll check on her. I, I just work on that. Great ideas. Well, like John says, a lot of folks just going to drive up, and grab the thing, and, and they haven't made an effort to understand. Yeah, yeah, it is. So that's a good idea. Um, and then Article Five is basically to see if the voters will approve um, our our collective bargaining with the um, support staff, which I think um, is very reasonable. So in the past, we haven't. I don't recall us ever having problems with this particular article, but what can I say? Uh, so there's a new article six and that's um, see if the district school district will vote to authorize the school board to convey a one quarter acre parcel of real property, which is a vacant lot, not lost. I'll take the S out of there. Typo. Located on the northerly side of Wilson Avenue near the intersection of Mill Street and Woodsville. Um, such lot more particularly shown on, oh, they've got a map. Okay. Um, so realtors have come up with a price. It's, it's a really tiny piece of land. It's on the opposite side of the road um, by the bridge behind the elementary school. So it's um, it's not on the school side, it's on the other side, which is a little bit of a parking lot that you might use if you're going to a softball game or something like that. This is the very edge of it that abuts a property owner there that wants to build a garage. And um, so basically we're asking for, we can't sell property. We have to have the taxpayer voters support. And uh, so that's what that's about. Yep. You figure, how much? How many parking spaces will be lost? I guess is, um, uh, that's going to be the concern. And if you know, if it's there again, if people aren't really so, if you're familiar with that spot, that yeah, I'm kind of familiar. you know where there's a um, a catch basin and a storm drain on the very left edge of that. No, um, that would still be ours. Okay. So what we lose is darn little, maybe parking, one parking, parking space. Anything. I'm not even sure we lose a parking we space. Lose one. Okay. No, I just think that's the important. Yeah, I don't think because I think what we're. And then the advantage is this person builds a garage and that's going to be taxed. So it will actually increase tax revenue for the town. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. There is that. <laughs> um, and then article seven through 10 are putting money into the different capital reserve funds. First one is a vehicle. Reserve fund, which is five thousand. The second one's building maintenance expendable trust, which is fifty thousand. The article nine is fifty thousand to the special ed that we were speaking of earlier. Article ten is fifteen one five thousand one five zero 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 dollars um, to the library media expendable trust. So those are that's what all of those are. And yes, can I just ask? Um, we threw those in there at the same, we throw those in there every year. Those are the same ones. Right. Um, I just want to verify those are funded as they are voted on. So I just want to make sure that's the order that the board wants them in. I don't know that I matters to me, anybody. We're planning to take fifty thousand out of the um, building fund for the playground. So I mean, it would be tomato tomato on the special ed. So I think it's fine. It, it, it's, I think it's the reason you're at is important to you know make the point that 
this only comes out of if there is available fund balance. Right? This isn't anything appropriate or raised. Thank you for that. It's important to note. Um, and then um, the last actual article is 11, which is um, just to sum it all up, it's asking for permission to spend money if somebody gives it to us. If somebody wants to give us a gazillion dollars, we're allowed to accept it. And I don't expect we'll get that, but, um, but that is the issue we were speaking of earlier. So that's um, more articles and we've made a change to article three. So that needs to be reflected and the typo taken out of article six would be great. And I had one comment on this. I, I'm going to, I'll, I'll hand this to you. It's just sort of a, um, it's the original face sheet to that. And I think there needs to be a little modification to that, but I'll give that to you. Nominate, uh, oh, policy JJF, student activities funds that we read for first reading last month. Dick, before we move on, I had a question. Yes, sir. Go um, ahead, Don. Hi. Uh, on my version of this, these articles, article 10 is this, the shall school district accept the provisions of RSA 198.20b, providing that any school district at any annual meeting may adopt an article. Everybody seeing what I'm looking at? Yep. And then it says authorizing indefinitely until specific rescission of such authority, the school board to apply to accept and expend without further action by the school district. So that relates to accepting money? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Got so it. basically we're, we're saying if from this day forward, Unless somebody says otherwise, we're allowing the school system to accept donations of any amount of money, which is honestly, it's ridiculously absurd that somebody has to ask permission from the voters to accept money from some, but it's a new world. Yeah. Um, so I don't have the policy in front of me, but I remember this was related to the senior class being allowed to um, put money into uh, a, a savings account for use for the senior class, so, you know, down the road somewhere. Um, the current policy basically says that uh, at the end of the year, what they haven't spent goes back to the school system. And honestly, it doesn't seem right to take money that they've raised from fundraisers and Tell them they can't do what they want with it. But so um, I guess we need a motion on accepting that that uh, policy JJF. Make the motion to accept that policy. He says with a big voice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll get a second on it. Okay. Who's first? Sabrina, seconds, anybody, any thoughts on it? Any concerns? Go ahead and vote then. All in favor of the uh, revised, um, adopting the revised policy say aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Then it passes. Uh, I think we already did the nomination. <laughs> Yeah, we did one nomination. Um, so do we have any other business anyone wants to bring before us tonight? I just want to make a comment about the, the lighting down at the middle school out front is, is very, very dark. And I'm just wondering if there's something that we could do to improve that, especially with the uh, uh, I've talked to Miss West and some of the other teachers that it's pretty dark when they're walking out of there. It's hard to see. Just looking up to see if Bert Vines is still on our list. Yep, I see him up there. So, Bert, um, Mr. Mr. Fenn was talking about lighting in front of the middle school and thinks it's not up to par, I guess. Okay, I have ordered and it's here 
a, a solar pole light to go on the walkway that comes out of the main entrance. That's the only area that I am aware that there was a problem. And as soon as we can dig a hole in the ground to put that light in, we will do it. There you go. No, perfect. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And all coming out of there, it's dark. There's just that one walking section. And then, you know, if you go into the gym on the other side, it seems to have the light coming in from there. Just that one spot coming out of the middle, you know, right out of the main entrance. So great. That'd be great. Okay. There, I, like I said, I'm aware of the walkway coming out of uh, the main entrance. If there's any other area, uh, that are of concern. If somebody could get with me and show me those, I would be happy to see what we can do about it. I think I think you I think you've identified the one that's that I've noticed. I I don't that that would be great. Thank you. Sure. We love it when a problem comes up and you solve it all in one minute. Jeez. Yeah, I know. That's a good oh, point. Yes, that's, that's right. Impressive. Any other problems you've already <laughs> solved that we can think of? <clears throat> All right. Um, public input. I don't know if anybody has anything we didn't before, but Lori, how did we do tonight as far as being heard? <laughs> good, good. We could all hear you. I could hear you anyways. Thank you. Oh, good. Um, my question, though, in you mentioned earlier something about in Lori's report about Scott Edwards um, retiring at the end of the year. I don't know if you officially voted on that or or make a notion of his retirement. Yeah, and, and, and I and I don't think she actually asked us to 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 take that action tonight. So okay, I'm gonna usually she formally recommends okay that we vote on some, and I think I'll let it let her do that next time. Okay, all right, thank you. Good question. Uh, <laughs> we, we did. I, and that was kind of like, just in case, you know, and I've never, and voting on a resignation has always been kind of a kind of odd thing to me anyway. Yeah, <laughs> and every once in a while I vote not to accept that. Just, just as yeah. Um, so, any other public input? Nothing. Okay. Well, I think we're probably going to have an early supper tonight. Um, <laughs> so, our next proposed meeting is March eighth, and we're going to try. We're going to have on Wednesday, March 3rd and 10th, we have to have virtual information meetings, which, you know, I've, I've kind of hinted at it before. I think all of this um, online and virtual stuff doesn't really get the message out to a very high proportion of the public, but it's something that we're actually required to do. Not that we wouldn't want to anyway, but it's, it's a requirement. So um, those are our meeting dates coming up. And I know we don't have a non-public session, so I guess if anyone wants to make a motion to go home. Oh, yeah. I'd just like to uh, thank Mr. Nichols. <laughs> I thought the Zoom presentation tonight was really good. Um, with expanding everybody's space and it was really excellent work. I just wanted to recognize that. So thank you. Absolutely. Dick, it's Lori. Can I just ask yes. to say something? Sure. So the the Zoom link, is it possible to get that out more? I mean, I found the link on the agenda that's posted on the SAU website and I had to like physically from one computer to the other, like type it all in. Can, mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't see it posted anywhere on like the high school Facebook page or on the SAU page. So I had put it on the elementary page. Can that be advertised a little bit better, please? I'll, I'll make a note of it and I'll ask about it. Thank you. Uh, it, it would be a real struggle to take that out of a newspaper article and try to type that. I mean, no, I, I know when I get that, but I mean, but I mean, if it's advertised like on the SAU Facebook yeah. page or could yeah. be put, you know, on the high school page or wherever. 
a link yep. somewhere that can be clicked on. I, I understand. Absolutely. Thank you. I had a Zoom meeting at five o'clock tonight and, and I, at five minutes of, I realized I couldn't remember how long ago the emails and I was like, you know how it is, you scramble to try to find it. So, yeah. So, um, I would say that Facebook is the most accessible form of social media for taxpayers. Why isn't the school board meetings streamed on Facebook anymore? Just so that we can get that information out there as broadly as possible. Um, I know that people can't interact on Facebook, but I think just having a live stream of it available would be, would be helpful to people. Did we start out on Facebook for a while? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Just that room for arguments and, you know, hashing things back and forth, but I think probably be the best way to get this information out to people. Mm -hmm. yep. The questions into Dick and he can handle them all. Not through Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> you you won't see me ever having a Facebook account. Yeah, no, I, it sounds like a great idea. We, I guess we just have to figure out who does what there. Yeah, Sabrina. I had one public input. Um, last year we had student representation from the high school. I'm wondering if, I think that was a great idea. And I know COVID, but I feel like we could probably have a student rep at our board meetings in person. So I would advocate, and I don't know if Mr. Chase has already left for the day. Oh, I see him up there. Up there. Um, I know it's a hard sell and he had different students fluctuating through the different meetings, but I would like to advocate that we have put it back out to the student population, maybe a junior that could finish this year and go into next year with us. A so student, do a year a, term. A putting a student rep back in here? Yes. Certainly try. Okay. Yeah, see if, you know, see if you find somebody interested. And Awesome. Maybe as part of his internship or yeah. somebody interested in social studies or politics or who knows, public speaking. Um, but I think it'd be great to have a student rep yeah. on our board uh, or part yeah. of us. BC, before oh, COVID, we always have had one. But well, I know like at the wellness meeting, we have a student in there and it's a lot easier to get firsthand remarks and, and you know, to ask the student exactly what's going on and get firsthand. So yeah. That's <laughs> <clears throat> okay thank you all right everybody keeps on coming up with other business so I just, i'll loiter here a second to see if everybody's got another thing if not they know what to do somebody needs to, all right anyone not in favor of adjourning so have it thank you all